going to get started. And the president of the college, Jack Spraga. I'm sure you met, you've all met the president before. Come on in, Mr. President. So um, we're going to keep the program kind of casual. Um, the reason for today is that um, my name is Professor Billington. I teach the um, class Tourism Destination Planning. And um, we've had the distinct opportunity to do something a little bit different in this particular class. First of all, the class is very small. It's two students there. So it's directed, yeah. And what I wanted them to do was understand that tourism just doesn't happen. You have to plan it. You have to make it happen the right way. Else anything could happen. And I was very encouraged this morning, Mayor. You made channel, uh, what was it, NBC 10, talking about your new informational kiosk. Yes. I thought that was, that was brilliant. That was great. Uh, for tour and that's going to be on 195, I guess. Uh, 79. 79? Yes. OK. OK. I didn't hear the whole story. It used to be 79. So I'll talk about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I've asked the students to take a look Keep at the, noise the, down. the Keep the noise down. I've asked the students to take a look at um, tourism through the sustainable tourism, using the sustainable tourism principles, which essentially are trying to figure out how we balance the economy, the environment, and the cult cultural social aspects of tourism. Um, tourism, we know, is the largest industry in, in this country, largest industry in many countries. Uh, the, the pressure is on now because our nation finally has a, a national promotional program which is uh, paying great benefits to Massachusetts. I think Bristol County um, is going to be a big player in that. We'd like our students to be a, a big player in, in that and take advantage of that, um, that promotion. But I've asked Griselle and Kathy to take advantage of the fact that um, this is not a hypothetical, this is not a case study. There is a casino that's going to be built in their city. They both happen to be from Fall River. So it gives them an opportunity, being at ground zero, to really look at the impacts of how it's going to help them and how it's going to impact them, impact their families. Bless you. So um, part of their responsibilities was to reach out to public figures. They met with the economic, um, economic development director, Ken Fiola. Ken, thank you for meeting with the students. I've also asked them to um, meet with the mayor, if possible. Um, the mayor has been very... Um, um, promotional about the casino, working with the casino and trying to promote it, and I think done a, a very good job. The fact that during this class they actually chose a location, uh, now they can look at that and look how it's going to be, look at how it's going to be planned. So I also want to look at the opposition. There's two sides to every story, okay? The idea is not to just uh, look at one side, to look at both sides. So people that may be opposed to the casino have a voice. Um, um, I'd like them to hear what that voice is as well. So with that, um, I'd like to introduce the students um, that are here, uh, Griselle and Kathy, who put this program together. But also, too, if you don't mind, um, we have uh, several of the professors, Mayor, uh, that uh, work with us and the leader of our Catch Institute, uh, John, John, <coughs> John Carissimo. But l let me first introduce Nicole Healy Heaney, who's with us here today on staff, uh, Ken Spurlett. Ken is over here. Uh, uh, we also have our film, um, cl uh, our TV program that's here. Uh, Paul Rol Robillard, who's going to be working with the casino management. Uh, John Bjorkson, our newest professor. Uh, Chef Carissimo, who runs the um, Catch Institute, who's going to talk about that at the, at the end. Uh, Dean Barati from uh, this division. And uh, Mike Vera, our vice president. And with that, I think I've introduced all the staff um, and our students, uh, student body from BCC, who have a great interest in what's going to happen and how they're going to fit into, the, into this future. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to my two students, who are then going to introduce the president and then the mayor. Thank you. Hi. Um, my name is Crystal Miranda, and I'm a student of hotel, restaurant, and tourism. Uh, right now I'm taking the class Business 122, which is Tour Destination Planning. And um, I am with Kathy, direct study with um, the Professor Billenson. Um, 
we just invite you today here to learn a little bit more about the casino, which is going to be here in the future. And before I introduce Kathy, I want to say thank you to the Mayor Flanagan, Mr. Ken Fiola, the President of BCC, Mr. Jack Sprega, and all teachers. Thank you. Mine is just a little bit longer than hers, but not too bad. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Benavides. I am a resident here in the city of Fall River, and I'm proud to say I'm a BCC student. Um, I graduated in December with my casino operations degree, and yes, I want a job at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> um, this semester, as Grizel said, we're taking tour destination planning um, as with a direct study through Professor uh, Billington here. The entire semester, we've been concentrating on learning about the Foxwoods proposal um, and looking at it through the geotourism lens. Um, many people think that Foxwoods just bring a casino. They're bringing much more than that. It's actually a tourism economic development package. Um, just in case you're not familiar with the term geotourism, uh, let me explain what it is. Geotourism means sustaining the character or personality of the city of Fall River. Um, in order to sustain the character of any location, you have to implement um, three principles of sustainability, social, economic, and environment. To put it simply, it means you need to be good to the people, you need to be good to the environment, and not just worry about money. Our guest speakers today are Mayor William Flanagan and Mr. Ken Fiola. Um, who's Vice President of Forever Economic Development. Um, they're here today um, to educate all of us on the Tourism Economic Development Plan. And I do want to thank everybody for taking time out to come here to help us out. Um, Professor Jor Jorson, I just screwed up your name, didn't I? <laughs> Mr. Spraga, uh, Mayor, Ken Viola, Mr. Robillard, Chef, Mrs. He Heaney. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Mike Vera, sorry. <laughs> um, and anybody else here, um, thank you so much for coming. And I'd love to introduce Ms. Jack Sprager now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, this is uh, something that we're very excited about, the Catch Institute. Uh, and within that uh, framework, uh, the great work that the mayor and uh, Director Fiola have done uh, to uh, bring a casino uh, we hope to uh, to Fall River. I don't know if you know uh, Professor Billington uh, very well or much about him, but he is an uh, an expert in the tourist field, tourism field, and as you mentioned, it's one of the largest uh, um, uh, components of the Massachusetts uh, economy, certainly in southeastern uh, Massachusetts as well. And we're looking to grow that through our Catch Institute. So uh, we're very blessed to have someone with his expertise. Uh, working with us. Uh, you've met Chef Carissimo and the uh, uh, other faculty, but the uh, Ketch Institute is an outgrowth of what we uh, are putting together uh, to at BCC to support the mayor's initiatives. Um, uh, long ago, I'm going to say four, five, six years ago, we began talk, when there was talk about a casino, uh, we put together a curriculum. Uh, for just for the casino operation, casino management, casino gaming. Uh, Paul Robillard has experience uh, uh, in casinos, and uh, so we were uh, aiming to provide workforce training for our students so that they could get a job. At that time, I think we were looking at Foxwoods and uh, uh, Connecticut and maybe Las Vegas or Atlantic City. Uh, 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 for our students and if someone wanted to go into that field. Now, it's a controversial field, as you probably know, uh, but our position at the college is that it's a, lo a legitimate workforce development opportunity. You may not be for everybody, but for those who are interested, we want to provide that opportunity. Uh, however, I want to uh, put that uh, work that we did years ago uh, in the framework of the Ketch Institute, the Culinary Arts, the tourism and hospitality that go with the casino. Uh, please don't overlook that part of uh, those parts of uh, catch. Um, we want to make, and I know the mayor and uh, Director Fiola, I've heard them talk about it many, many times, we want to make Fall River a destination area, southeastern Massachusetts, a destination area. We have the, uh, you know, we have the uh, Battleship Cove, we have the Marine Museum, the Children's Museum, uh, a CD rec, uh, there's a number of areas down near or uh, at the waterfront 
uh, that would make this an ideal uh, uh, situation, a destination area for tourists. Beyond the casino, okay, this is just because of the quality of life here and the wonderful things that are happening uh, under the mayor's leadership here in Fall River. So southeastern Massachusetts is a, uh, a rich area for tourism. Uh, Professor Billington is the key to that, uh, an expert in that. But uh, lo and behold, uh, and you're going to hear more about this, of course, uh, uh, the, uh, arises on the, or what comes up on the horizon is the idea of a casino for Fall River. And the mayor is going to explain that uh, to you. We couldn't have a better, bigger champion uh, than the mayor and Director Fiola uh, about about the economic, first of all, the economic development of the region and the economic development of the city, but specifically what the, what the mayor has done in arranging this casino uh, uh, possibility is, is just fabulous. And when you hear the numbers, you'll be, you'll be just blown away by the numbers that are involved. So without uh, further ado, I want to introduce this uh, champion for uh, the city of Fall River. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce to you Mayor Will Flanagan. Also joined here today by Ken Fiola. Ken, if you want to join me up here or, or stay positioned where you're at, I leave that up to you. But let me begin by saying uh, it's an honor for me to be here, and I love Bristol Community College. Uh, so I actually had the opportunity while I was in college to take some courses here, and uh, Jack Sprager is such a driving force in education. And this campus specifically uh, is probably not just one of the best community colleges in Massachusetts, but probably one of the best community colleges uh, in the nation. And uh, he's always getting accolades and recognitions uh, for the work he's been doing here at BCC. So I see somewhat of a diverse uh, group here today. I see students who look like they're from the culinary uh, program. and other students, just so I can get a feel for what the room is all about, what are some of our majors? <coughs> 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 tourism and yeah. So tourism, hospitality, <laughs> and culinary, that's great. <coughs> so, so we have tourism, casino operations, culinary. So I'll try to, <coughs> just, to catch <coughs> I'll steer my remarks to hopefully those three areas. So how many of you know the framework for resort-style gaming in Massachusetts? Right now, it's legal for a resort-style casino to be built in Massachusetts. And the legislature, through their legislation, uh, drafted a gaming bill. It was signed into law by Governor Deval Patrick. The gaming bill broke Massachusetts down into three regions. Region A, which is the greater Boston area, uh, Region B, which is Western Massachusetts, and Region C, which we're in, which encompasses Bristol County, Cape and the Islands, and Plymouth County. So when you look at the construction of resort-style casino, all three regions are at a different time frame uh, in history. If you go up to Boston, you have really two competing entities right now. You have Wynn Resorts. If you Google Steve Wynn, you see that he's built casinos out in China and Las Vegas. And also uh, Mohegan Sun. Those of you may be familiar with Mohegan Sun because they have a establishment out in Connecticut. So in the Boston area, which is uh, Revere and Everett, they'll have some opportunity there to construct their casino. And the gaming commissions will issue one license to that region. When you go out to Western Massachusetts, which is region B, uh, you have Springfield. And Springfield is the only community out there competing for a license. And they have partnered with uh, MGM. Uh, MGM is an operator that's out in Las Vegas. They're very successful on the Las Vegas Strip, and they have a number of casinos out there. So if one would have to bet, it looks like that's where that casino is going to be built out in Region B. Now let's focus on our region, Region C. You have really three communities competing right now for, I'll say, two licenses. And I'll explain why I say two licenses here in Region C. 
you have the city of Fall River, uh, and we've been working with Foxwoods. You have Taunton, which has been working with the Mashpee Wampanoags. Now, the Mashpee Wampanoags are a Native American tribe, and under the gaming uh, bill, the Native American tribe can uh, apply for their own license. So they have an opportunity, once they meet some federal and statutory requirements, they'll be able to submit an application to the Gaming Commission for their own license. Now you have Fall River and New Bedford uh, potentially competing for the one and only commercial license, not Native American, commercial license here in Region C. So New Bedford has been working with several entities uh, on going forth on a casino. And at some point, they, like Fall River, will have a referendum vote in the city uh, that they live. So how many of you live in Fall River? How many of you live in New Bedford? So if you live in New Bedford, at some point, Mayor Mitchell and the city council will schedule a vote in their city. You'll have the opportunity to go and vote. If you live in Fall River, myself and the city council uh, will work to schedule a referendum vote, and you'll have the opportunity to go vote. So. Let's talk about the specifics now of what a casino would mean for a city. Originally, the Gaming Commission had established July 23rd as the deadline to submit an application for a resort-style casino here in Fall River or anywhere else in Region C. The Gaming Commission has since met over the last, I would say, 60 days and they decided to extend that deadline. So now cities and towns in Region C have until September 23rd to submit an application for a casino. And that has given us, myself and Ken Fiola and our development team, an opportunity to do a complete review of the project, meaning location, size and scope, and every other detail that goes in to a project of this magnitude. So I know we have identified the Harbor Mall site in our city's south end as the potential for construction, but even that's under review at this time because we want to make sure that when we do go public again uh, with this venture, we want to make sure that it's the best we can make it. So we're going to use this additional time to our advantage to make sure that we're doing a complete analysis from top to bottom on this particular project. So what we want to build here in the city uh, is a resort-style casino. And right now the minimum construction level is $500 million. So a half a billion dollars of investment into the structure of what's going to be built. The project here in Fall River, we've been talking about uh, $750 million, so a project just shy of $1 billion in construction. We would hope to see at least 3,000 jobs created uh, at, at this facility, at least 2,000 temporary jobs in building it. So your bricklayers, your electricians, your masons, your carpenters uh, getting jobs to help build a facility. And we want the jobs to be specific to the people of our region. So, you know, I think BCC is really poised here to have some great footing because you have campuses in Taunton, New Bedford, and Fall River. And if you look at your students, uh, your student population, they're coming from really those three main cities and their greater areas here in Bristol County. So the Fall River project, you know, we're hoping to have restaurants built in there, right? So yeah. How many of you have been to a casino? So you go to, let's use a, a close one, like Foxwoods. You go into Foxwoods, you have restaurants there. You have restaurants with, that are endorsed by celebrity chefs, whether they be Todd English, Emma Legassi, Mario Batali. You have host restaurants that really don't have a name brand, but they're sponsored uh, by the uh, casino themselves. So you have jobs in the culinary field there, uh, and jobs that may pay uh, a higher salary than some of the other competing facilities uh, within this area. So from a culinary standpoint, uh, you have the opportunity 
to gain work, but also gain experience too. I'm not sure uh, what you want to do in the culinary field, whether it's open your own establishment, whether you want to work in management or, or work in some type of other uh, field in culinary. Uh, but you had the opportunity here for the experience and the job opportunity. Uh, for the tourism aspect of it, a facility of this magnitude would probably be generating up to twenty to thirty thousand patrons a day. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're looking at twenty to thirty thousand patrons a day. That's pretty high. Um, that's a good amount of people coming into the community uh, and visiting this establishment. And the goal for me as mayor, if we're able to build this project. You just don't want 20 or 30,000 people going into one facility and staying there and spending all their money there. Uh, you would want them to go out into the community. So when you develop what's called a host community agreement, uh, that's the document uh, that is entered into between the municipality uh, and the gaming operator. And that spells out the financials uh, that are beneficial to the community. So. Within that host community agreement, you, you spell out the amount of jobs, you spell out how much in tax revenue comes back to Fall River, uh, but you also spell out how you can help the community too, whether it's advertising, free advertising for local establishments within the casino, uh, whether it's encouraging the employees of the casino, three to 5,000 people, to eat off-site within the area. One of the interesting components of a host community agreement is that whether it's region A, B, or C, whoever does get a host community license uh, has to invest within the community. They have to buy local goods. So if you think about all of the jobs that are created from this type of project, you would have to buy your local linens. You'd have to buy your seed food locally, your poultry locally, your meat locally. Um, you would have to buy your lighting locally. So there's benefits going back into the local community uh, for not just on site, but to lift up the entire city. So there's being jobs generated as an offshoot of this project too. But as one of your professors stated earlier, uh, there's also some people that are going to oppose this project. Uh, they may not have all their questions answered, they may be unsure. They may not support casino gaming. So this project does not have 100% of community support, no matter where you go. Uh, but I think the great thing about it is that you and I will have the opportunity to vote on it. So it's a democracy. You have your opportunity to go to the ballot box, vote yes or vote no. And if it's yes, the project has the opportunity to move forward. If it's no, then it's no, and the project does not have the opportunity to move forward. So the people will have the opportunity to decide whether or not this project moves forward. So I was told we can go to 1130, or we've chewed up about 25 minutes already. So I'll open it up to questions that you may have uh, in the remaining five minutes. Right here. Did you have a personal belief? Like, did you vote on this altogether? Not to date. Um, as a citizen of Fall River, or born and raised here, uh, live here, uh, when the election is determined, the election date, I'll have the opportunity, uh, just like any other Fall River citizen, to go vote on it. Uh, but as mayor, uh, my responsibility to the community is to create opportunities, right? So whether it's uh, the Life Science Technology Park off of Route 24, whether it's establishing a waterfront or attracting a resort-style casino, uh, my responsibility to the community is to create as many job opportunities as I possibly can. Forever has a staggering unemployment rate. You know, we have double-digit unemployment here in the community. So, you know, if I was to stand out on the corner and ask people what their top issues are, I'm sure economic development and job creation would probably rank right at the top. Um, I'm a mother and I know everybody say the casino is going to be built in the Harbor Mall. Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned about the situation that they have a, a school near to the future casino. Yes. How can you be um, fix that problem? I have a concern too. 
with the elementary school being located uh, near the facility. Uh, I was actually a student uh, at Luterno Elementary School, so I know the area very well, and I uh, grew up in the city south end, so I'm very familiar uh, with the area. And as I stated earlier, uh, even the location, I think, is something that's still up for discussion as we have more time in reviewing this project. So if that ultimately is decided to be the location, you have to somehow mitigate any interference you would have uh, with the elementary school, whether it's locating the establishment closer to William S. Canning Boulevard, whether it's putting trees uh, or some type of a buffer uh, between the two property lines. Uh, but that's a concern on people's mind. And, you know, it's very interesting because location affects people's vote, I believe. So if I put the facility in your backyard right up against your fence, you probably may vote no on the project because you don't want to deal with the traffic uh, and the noise or any other effects that come from a construction project of this magnitude. But if it's located further away from you uh, or not near a school, you may be more in tune to vote yes on the project because then the job creation and the tax revenue and the benefits from having this establishment start to outweigh any of the negatives that are associated with it. So being close to an elementary school is a concern. I think you have to work with your engineers and your planners uh, to do your best you can to mitigate it. But I do recognize that if that is decided to be the location, that may affect the way people decide to vote on the project. So it is a concern. Um, between the, the Taunton um, destination and the Fall River destination, is it either one or the other? Or is... Between Taunton and Fall River, it can be both. Oh, okay. Right? I so, thought there was only like one um, that is allowed. So. There can be two. And between Fall River and New Bedford, it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. But between Fall River, New Bedford, and Taunton, there can be two. Because okay. Taunton... Uh, is working with a Native American tribe. So if you look at the gaming bill, there's specifically language in there which allows a Native American tribe to pursue their own license. So Mashpee Wampanoag are the Native American tribe, and if they are able to take land into trust, which means get sovereign land, uh, their own tribal land in Taunton, which would take federal action, they would be able to at some point construct a casino uh, on their premises. Fall River and New Bedford are competing for what's known as a commercial license. So U.S. soil, non-sovereign land with a commercial operator, whether it be Foxwoods or any other uh, commercial operator such as Wynn or MGM uh, that have a corporate structure to them. Oh, okay. So it's completely different. Different, yes. All right. Chef? Chairman Cromwell uh, indicated that as early as last week that they're going ahead regardless regardless of whether the referendum is put up and gaming in Massachusetts is, is voted down or whether another license gets let into one of the other two areas. What do you think the Gaming Commission's position is going to be on the fact of if the Wampanoags do put up a casino and there is another license left, the Wampanoags will be off the hook as far as any taxes mm. whatsoever. So from yeah. one casino they'll be collecting a, a hefty percentage of taxes from the other casino they'll be collecting nothing. <coughs> Uh, Chef raises a very good point. So the way the gaming bill is drafted goes back to what we were just talking about. <coughs> Let's say Fall River is successful. You know, we have a good site. We go to a referendum vote. The people vote yes on it. We submit our application to the Gaming Commission. Gaming Commission approves it in February of next year when we expect them to make approval. And we start construction in 2015 probably take two to three years to open up the project. 2018, we cut a ribbon, right? So let's say in 2018, we're up and running, revenue's coming into the city, taxes are going back to the Commonwealth, jobs are being created. Now let's say the Mashpee Wampanoag finally get their land into trust. So the federal government says, yes, Mashpee Wampanoags, we accept your application. Uh, you're able to have tribal land in Taunton. You have 200 <coughs> acres. Here you go. Good luck to you. Let's say the Mashpee Wampanoags in 2018 now build their casino. 
under the gaming bill, they do not have to pay any revenue back to the state. So their project would be free and clear of any taxes back to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which would pretty much allow them to generate larger profits in their casino, probably have better payout. So the odds at playing at the Taunton location may be better than the Fall River and New Bedford locations. So their product uh, would be able to operate uh, at a less taxable burden than the other projects in Massachusetts, whether it be Springfield, Fall River, or Boston. That's concerning, I think, to the state. And it's concerning, I believe, to the other operators, especially here in Region C. Because are you going to invest a billion dollars, potentially, in building a casino in Fall River and New Bedford, knowing that Taunton has the opportunity uh, with their facility to go Native American and not pay any taxes back to the Commonwealth. So first, I think we have to ask ourselves, what's the probability of the federal government allowing Tauntons and the Mashpee Wampanoags to take land into trust? Right now, it's very slim. If you look at Florida or California, other states that have tribal nations with them, uh, there has not been an appetite to allow any Native American tribe after 19... 32 or 35, 1934, 1934 to take land into trust. And that was solidified in the case of uh, Salazar versus Cacieri, which happened with the, I believe, Narragansett tribe out in Rhode Island. So they have a Herculean task ahead of them in Taunton to take the land into trust. But I think that chills investment here, and it's on the minds of everybody who's investing money within the, ma the Commonwealth on whether or not uh, this is real in Taunton. So it's something I think we have to pay attention to, uh, and it could have a chilling effect on what people are willing to invest in the Commonwealth. I think we have time for one more. One more question? Right here? Um, you're going to be repurposing the Harbor Mall, which is a great way to enhance the economic development of a run down location. Yeah. Are they going to take over any other place like that and beautify the city? <laughs> If the Harbor Mall site does move forward, I could potentially see that whole corridor being developed along William Canning Boulevard. And there's economic development there now. You have the Stop and Shop Plaza. Uh, the plaza where Stop and Shop is is full. Uh, there's no vacancies there, uh, especially where you have the Wendy's and the Taco Bell. Then when you go across the street uh, where Furniture City is, I, not Furniture City, uh, the furniture store might be Cotty's. Uh, that plaza is full too. The sites that are suffering right now are that Shaw's site, because Shaw's has uh, slowed down their operations, and the Harbor Mall site. Walmart moved to another location, and Kmart's been a, a department store that's been struggling over the last decade, really, and they've closed on a number of their sites nationwide. So that site has potential for development, whether it's gaming or any other development that comes in there, because you got so much buildable acreage there. I want to say between the Harbor Mall site and the Shaw site, you're probably looking at about 50 to 60 acres uh, that are buildable and that have infrastructure there, water, sewer, electricity, uh, high-speed internet capabilities. So it's, it's a valuable site to be developed, whether it's casino gaming or anything else. So the Shaw site is included in the Harbor Mall site? Not under this particular proposal, no. But at some point, you can foresee development there. Um, and contiguous development too. If you, you know, go to Connecticut, go to uh, Vegas or, or any other sites that have uh, resort style casinos, and I'm not talking about like a Twin River that doesn't have a hotel or shopping, uh, resorts. Um, and you'll see development along the route, whether it be restaurants or hotels, convenience stores. You gotta think what people want when they're traveling and that type of development focuses in on it. So uh, to get back to your professor's statements earlier, tourism just doesn't happen by accident. Uh, you could have tourist attractions within your community, and we definitely have them here in Fall River. New Bedford has them, and so does Taunton. It's how do you take what you have, develop around it, and then attract new opportunities into your community and develop around that too. So I think development is contiguous. 
and you know if, if you put in something within your community it acts as a magnet and it attracts other contiguous opportunities around it so I, you know I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come in and speak with you and I think you as students especially in the fields you have chosen uh, have some great opportunity here whether it's Taunton, New Bedford, Fall River uh, you have the opportunity to uh, work in an industry uh, that you want to have as your career and I think uh, you have over 250 jobs 150 you have over 150 job classifications that are generated from this type of a project and at all different pay scales too so you have class you have jobs that GED entry level and then you have jobs right up to PhD entry level so you have an opportunity here and uh, I encourage all of you to continue to follow your dreams and to focus in on what you want to do and to graduate and then use the experience you have here uh, to earn a living and grow your family yeah Just a quick question. yeah go right ahead I know that's our goal here in Fall River so when I draft a host community agreement uh, I, I advocate for Fall River residents to have priority in hiring. I'm sure Mayor Mitchell in New Bedford would do the same and Mayor Hoy in Taunton would also do the same for his community. So uh, you want, and same thing with veterans, uh, uh, you, you advocate for veterans to be, be hired uh, and given a preference. So for residents, yes, veterans, yes, but also regionally too, uh, because if Somerset, Swansea, Westport are doing well, so does Fall River. So you want to make sure you have a strong regional approach uh, to this type of a project. So thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you. We have just a couple more minutes. Yeah. Um, I think that was absolutely brilliant. I have an opportunity to work with several mayors uh, in Rhode Island, but to have the mayor come to the community college, it's what a community college is supposed to be about when the community works with, the, with government and government is embedded in the, the college. So thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Professor. Um, thank you for today. Um, and I think that the president is absolutely right um, with his remarks about um, how we operate here and your leadership. I appreciate that. Um, I want to thank my students, Chriselle and Kathy, for putting this together. And of course, all the students that um, had great questions and great attention today. And our chef, if you don't mind, he has another responsibility um, besides being a great chef with, with culinary. He's actually the leader of our Catch Institute, which we're quite proud of. And he never misses an opportunity to talk about it. So if you, do you have two more minutes? I'd love to. Okay, <laughs> chef, come on up. And this is an opportunity to sell, to, to sell chef and to spread the word a little bit, a little bit further. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, I don't know about my cooking abilities. I haven't been, the president's been keeping me out of the kitchen for the past two years. I don't know if that's a planned uh, thing on his part. But just about the Catch Institute, my culinary students have heard, have heard me talk about it. It's a new concept here at the college. And uh, we've been working on it for the past year and a half, uh, and along with uh, Professor Robillard and Professor Bjornsson. Uh, and certainly your, your own professor here, uh, and under the leadership of uh, Dean Barati, uh, putting together the courses and the programs that are going to be in it. So those of you, how many of you in the hospitality program in basically in your first or second semester? How many in your third semester? Yeah. We're in your fourth semester, you're yeah. all graduating? Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> so, so very shortly, very shortly we will be reaching out to you. When we put together the Catch Institute, the Catch Institute comprised the Culinary Arts Program, Casino, Hospitality, and Tourism. And basically what we did was we recreated the degrees to come into one degree, Associate of Applied Science and Hospitality Management, with the four options that, that are going to be part of that. So that you'll be able to be able to concentrate on the food service management, hotel restaurant management, casino, and travel and tourism, and also with the geotourism certificate. So eventually you'll all be hearing from us. We're, we're hoping to roll out our first class in September. Uh, and unlike the culinary arts program, we will be starting a new class every semester. We'll have a new class start in September, and we'll have a new class start in, in January. Uh, and that's, some of you may not realize the importance of that concept, but in culinary arts, for example, when you come in and you take your assessment tests uh, and you need one or two developmental courses, as I'm sure, and you know, you've got to be aware of the figures at BCC, approximately 85% of our incoming students need developmental courses. 
What that means in culinary arts is that regardless of how good you are, how skilled you may be, you're going to be here for three years, only because of the way the courses run and because of the fact that we only have one kitchen, Mr. President. Yeah. <laughs> Subtle hint, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Subtle hint. It can be part of the host agreement. <laughs> um, and and you, have, you have to understand that if we do get this, and, and I'm just going to veer off the path a minute for a second, if we do get this casino in our backyard, that's going to be an absolutely amazing opportunity for Fall River and being very parochial about this, an absolutely amazing opportunity for the students who will be in the Catch Institute to have basically a laboratory right in their own backyard. Uh, when I go around and speak about what jobs are available in a casino, I tell them that regardless of what your field of expertise is, if you're involved in planting, if you're involved in horticulture, if you're involved in maintenance and facilities, I'm not even touching on what are the main things. I'm not even touching on being a, being a dealer in a casino or being a pit boss or being a chef or anything like that. But look at a casino like a mini city. And every job that's available in a city is available in a casino. So there are opportunities for everybody and anybody. My job and our job is to let you know the fact of what you're studying for makes you available to have one of those jobs. Person's been studying computers for four years. Well, hotels, uh, casinos are all about computers. You can't walk into a hotel or a casino from beginning to end without being involved in computers. It's security. It's it's people in the health field because they have their own health offices. So everything and anything that's a job opportunity in a city is certainly a job opportunity in a in a casino. So the jobs will be will be myriad. They'll be varied. They'll be fantastic. There'll be many of them. And we talk about the availability of jobs to the host community. We're working with a Plainville Racetrack in, yes. in Plainville, Penn Gaming. And they're, they're hiring in a circle. So basically, they're going like 50 miles out, and they're hiring within that circle. When they can't find people within that circle to fill the jobs they need, they go another 10 miles out and another 10 miles out until they get all of the people that they need. But their commitment and all of the people that are applying for licenses in the various areas, their commitment is to the local area that hosts that casino. So that will be jobs for that particular area first. So the casino to Fall River, it's important to the city, but believe me, it will be just as important to the, to the college and to the students in the college. Uh, and we would probably get 100% employment out of that. So if you have any questions, my office is in the Grady Dining Room in, uh, in G Building, the lower level. I'd be more than happy to speak with you individually. You can also speak with uh, uh, Professor Bjornsson, uh, who is going to be handling all of the students within the Catch Institute, regardless of your of your major interest. So, thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thank you. <laughs> and just to conclude, I, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, uh, emphasize once again the mayor and Ken Fiola, champion in the city. He, uh, they've done great work with this. Uh, there's an astounding number of jobs when you count the construction jobs, and the, uh, let alone after the things are up and open and running, the number of jobs there. Uh, uh, the, the mayor has insisted that VCC be uh, a training center uh, for all of, this, uh, uh, all of these jobs, and the mayor has insisted that Foxwoods, and they have agreed, uh, Foxwoods has agreed that uh, the employment should uh, concentrate in Fall River, uh, at least initially. Uh, as John mentioned, there's a, there are going to be concentric circles, but it, it is focused in Fall River, and the mayor and Ken uh, have just been spectacular in uh, advocating for this city and uh, the number of jobs, the number of tourist dollars, uh, the revenue that's coming in. I mean, it's really astounding, uh, some of the figures, and uh, I'm sure that every opportunity will be made to make known those figures before any referendum. But it's, it's, as the mayor said, it's, a, it's a, something that people feel uh, one way or the other about. And that's the way we feel, as I mentioned, about starting a casino program. There were criticisms about that, but it's an opportunity. It's not for everybody. If students want to uh, go into that field, uh, then that's why we make it available. Okay? Now, I understand that there are students that don't want to go into that field, and that's fine. They vote with their feet. And, uh, and uh, that's the same for all our programs. Okay? So, Mr. Mayor and Ken, I want to thank you very much, and uh, keep up the great work. Any other pieces? Thank you.